All right, we're going to um, look at some of the mechanisms uh, through which antibiotics actually work uh, on a bacterial cell and what they do to them. So not uh, a we're not going, going into specific detail with the chemistry of it uh, or even a really high level of fine detail of the exact mechanisms, but the, the general mechanisms in which they work, the places where we typically find them, um, and the, just the major classes of those antibiotics um, so that you kind of have some idea of the differences you know, between them. First off, men mention this. Um, so we have uh, you know, the, uh, the host organism, well, let's say the drug, so the chemical, the antibiotic. We have the host organism, and then the bacteria. So it's important to kind of keep keep this in mind, right? The drug we think of, the antibiotic, acting on the bacteria. And then, oh, it's going to stop the bacteria from being able to divide, or it's going to kill the bacteria in some way. What you have to keep in mind is that uh, many antibiotics are also going to have an effect on the host. All right, so this could be a, a negative effect. So there could be a toxic effect on the host organism, depending on how they work. So as we talk about some of these different mechanisms, we'll see that some of them are specific for bacteria. So they shouldn't really have any specific uh, effect on the host. Whereas others are a little more broad, the thing that they affect in bacteria um, can be affected in the host cell as well, so they can they can have a similar type of effect. All right, now we, we know that the bacteria are also going to be harming the host, so the infection. At the same time, you know, the host's uh, immune response might be working back against the bacteria. We produce a number of uh, antimicrobial peptides. We have our, uh, our own um, microbiome that can be combating the infectious bacteria as well. And the drug um, might be affecting our microbiome cells the same as it is affecting the pathogen, which means we might be knocking out cells that are normally there to, to help us. So these are all things to, to sort of consider. Um, you know, the bacteria may you know, metabolize the drug, you know, into also something uh, different. Same way our body could potentially metabolize it, you know, into something different. Um, so there's a whole variety of different types of interactions that can go on when being presented with a, a drug like this. So it shouldn't just be something that's just done randomly um, without a specific reason. So um, just kind of knowing, knowing that um, that is happening, let's talk specifically about um, some of the different mechanisms and some of the different classes. So we're going to have some groups of antibiotics uh, that are going to work specifically on the cell wall. So one of those groups are, that's supposed to be a B, so that's beta lactams. Belonging to this group, for example, is penicillin. Penicillin uh, is going to act by specifically binding to, if you remember uh, in a previous lecture, the transpeptidase and it will block then the uh, ability of the peptide bridges to form between the NAMs and then uh, you won't be able to stabilize the, the membrane, especially uh, if the cell is going to try to divide. It's not going to be able to build any new membrane. Or, sorry, I keep saying membrane, but cell wall, uh, peptidoglycan. Uh, and it, the cell will potentially then lyse right, or die. So um, different types of antibiotics that specifically uh, affect the cell wall can be bacteriolytic. Another group uh, of antibiotics um, that affect the cell wall um, can do so in, in slightly different ways. All right, so for example, we have our, had our bacitracin. Uh, bacitracin is then going to uh, affect the ability of the NAMs and the NAGs to be transported uh, from the cytoplasm out 
um, into the uh, environment where they're going to be added to the cell wall. So it binds to that back to Prenol. And then you can't provide any any new NAMs and NAG, so you can't build any new new cell wall. So if Autolysin is cutting the cell wall, but there's no new NAMs and NAGs to build it, then the cell wall would lice. Again, same, same, same sort of thing. There's a variety of other types of antibiotics that all kind of work in some way, one of the chemicals that are involved in the cell wall. All those would typically be bacteriolytic, and all those would act specifically on the bacteria. We don't have peptidoglycans, all right? So we don't have the, some of these particular enzymes to do these jobs. So these antibiotics, while you can be allergic to penicillin, so penicillin can have a negative effect on you, penicillin wouldn't be uh, disrupting your peptidoglycans because you don't have peptidoglycans. So some of these types of antibiotics can still have toxic effects on a person for other reasons, but through their mechanism of action, they, they wouldn't necessarily do anything to, to your cells because you're lacking their target molecules. Just kind of keep that in mind. So then we're going to have other types of mechanisms. Those mechanisms affecting DNA synthesis, DNA replication. So uh, one of the major groups here are the quinolones or fluoro fluoroquinolones. Okay. Uh, and what these molecules are going to do uh, is disrupt um, the DNA replication process. Um, specifically, uh, what they're doing is they're binding to um, topoisomerase. And so hopefully you're familiar with that. And if not, uh, basically the DNA is super coiled. So it's, it's coiled up really tight uh, to fit inside the cell. And before DNA replication can occur, it has to unravel uh, so, and loosen up so that replication can occur and the two strands can be pulled apart. And so an enzyme called topoisomerase then allows the DNA to uncoil um, so that it, it can more easily be pulled apart. The fluoroquinolone binds to that enzyme, stops it from being able to work, so then the DNA can't be pulled apart the same way, so it blocks then the, the DNA replication pathway, and that, and that won't happen. Um, you have some uh, types of antibiotics that work um, also on blocking DNA replication by inhibiting um, folic acid synthesis. You might say, what, what does that have to do with DNA? Um, but essentially folic acid is necessary for um, the production of the uh, purines and pyrimidines. So the A's, T's, G's, and C's, the adenine, thymine, guanine, cytosine, um, nitrogenous bases. And so without it, without the folic acid, you can't produce them, and so you can't make more of the nucleotides, so then you can't make more you know, of the DNA. So some antibiotics will specifically inhibit the um, DNA replication process by limiting the process. These processes generally can be bacteriostatic. Because that wouldn't necessarily result in the death of the cell, not being able to make more DNA. It just is, as long as it doesn't interfere with gene expression, then um, the cell still survives. It just can't divide anymore. So the cell number just levels off. There's no more cells, but uh, they're not. It's not killing killing those cells in particular. This here is supposed to represent a uh, ribosome uh, reading a messenger RNA molecule. So we're talking here about what would generally be called gene expression, uh, and then more simplistically, we'll just call it protein synthesis. So we have uh, a variety of different types um, of enzyme or different antibiotics that will then bind to uh, proteins involved in this process. So the process of protein synthesis. So proteins used to make proteins. Now, um, we have aminoglycosides. Uh, 
as one group or a category of uh, antibiotics. Um, and so what the uh, aminoglycosides are going to do is they bind to the small subunit, the 30S subunit of the ribosome. So it's a, a little one, like here. Uh, and what they do is they mess up the, the proofreading uh, of the new polypeptide and they cause errors. So they'll be typically errors. in the new protein and that will lead to malfunction in the cell. So uh, if they're membrane proteins or other types of proteins, uh, enzymes in the cell, then those proteins won't function properly and that can lead to the cell dying. So they may be uh, bactericidal, it's possible, um, or they could could cause something else to happen. Uh, so a whole variety of different ones. It all depends on the particular proteins that are um, being translated, you know, at that point in time. So they could be bactericidal. Uh, we have other groups of antibiotics that do uh, similar things, macrolides and chloramphenicol. So a group called macrolides. Uh, and the chloramphenicols, which are a whole actual group as well. They're going to bind to the, the larger subunit up here to the 50S uh, subunit. And through binding to the um, 50S subunit, they typically stop protein synthesis. So whereas um, binding to the small subunit usually disrupts the process um, and can it sort of causes errors in the process, a binding to the large subunit usually will shut it down uh, and uh, you won't get the protein produced. So again, that can be bacteriostatic or it could be bactericidal um, and really de depends on where the, again those proteins are going to end up. So it could have a whole variety of different um, sort of results. There are also other, other groups, other types of proteins, um, other, sorry, I keep saying protein, but um, antibiotics, the types of antibiotics that are going to affect the uh, proteins that are your, your enzymes. Okay, so metabolic pathways. So just the uh, disruption of, the, of these. Um, those that are going to disrupt the metabolic pathways um, it will just, uh, again, cause a whole variety of different uh, types of effects you know, on the cell. Again, usually resulting in um, uh, cell death, but uh, they could potentially just be static uh, if depending again on what, the, what particular enzymes that they are blocking. So we have ways in which antibiotics work. Some of them are going to kill the cell outright. Some of them are going to cause the cell to lice, which obviously kills it as well, but the cells just burst and gone. Uh, the difference is if you were looking at them under a microscope uh, and they were bacteriolytic, the cells would just be gone. Whereas if they were bactericidal, you would still see the cells and you would have to then perform uh, another analysis to determine whether it actually killed them or, or whether they were still alive. So, because then we have those ba that are bacteriostatic ones that are just that are not going to kill the cell. They're just going to halt the cell's ability to divide. Um, and if they were removed, like I showed in the, uh, the graph in the previous talk I gave, um, then the cells can continue to divide again. They'll just they'll just go away if, if the agent was was removed or they were removed from the environment with that particular chemical agent. So you have some of those things happening. Um, we have you know as far as the bigger um, groups go. Uh, Beta-lactams uh, are ones that are specifically going to affect the cell wall. The quinolones are ones that are kind of affecting the DNA replication process specifically. Uh, aminoglycosides, uh, macrolides, and chloramphenicols, these are all groups that have something to do with interfering with protein synthesis, uh, and then they do it in, in different sorts of ways, uh, and then can, they can result in, um, you know, like I said, either making uh, 
faulty proteins or not making proteins you know, at all. So that's just a kind of an overview. I have a, a PowerPoint in my class that you can look at if you want to see all these structures, but you're, we're not going to uh, focus on the chemistry of the structures of them, but you can look at them to kind of see the diversity, especially of the, the different types of structures as well. Um, and and uh, I think I'll also have a little table um, where you can kind of match up, you know, um, some of the main members of each of the groups like penicillin uh, and, and streptomycin from here and, uh, and come say, you know, what group do they belong to? What's their mechanism of action? So that's kind of the main thing we're going to take away from this.